Hi guys, so today we're looking at calculations involving heat. So there are certain steps that we need to follow when we're looking at calculations involving heat. Step one, if needed, draw a diagram to help you see what, where energy is being lost, where it's being gained, what objects you have. Step two, always write and start off with energy lost is equal to the energy gained. So the energy that one system is losing is equal to the energy gained by another system. When dealing with these questions, you must think about where is the heat being given out, either as a change of state and or a change in temperature. You must think about where the heat is being absorbed, either as a change of state and or a change of temperature again. Try not to miss any part. So try to make sure that you have included all systems that are gaining or losing heat. Remember that a change of state, the energy required to change state we always use the equation E is equal to LM. And remember that when you have a change in temperature, to find the energy required when there's a change of temperature, we always use the equation E is equal to MC delta T. So these are the two equations you're using throughout all of these calculations. So in these exercises, we're going to use the following specific heat capacities of water, copper, and aluminium. We're also given the specific latent heat of vaporization of water and the specific latent heat of fusion of ice. So we're given these values in all of these questions that we're going to do. Okay, let's look at a few example questions. So we're going to start off with some very straightforward ones and then move on to more difficult questions. So we're going to start off with exercise 15.2 and we're starting off just looking at latent heat. So these are our first few questions, question one, question two, question three, they only look at latent heat. Let's look at question two. How much heat energy is required to completely melt 500 grams of ice, which is at zero degrees Celsius. So in this question, we are looking for a change of state. So we're losing energy, sorry, we're gaining energy. Their ice is melting. There's a change of state. So whenever the there is a change in state, our energy required to change the state is equal to LM. So we need to find the energy required for this change of state. We're told that the mass is equal to 500 grams. We must convert this into kilograms by dividing by a thousand. Our mass is equal to 0 0.5 kilograms. And we need the latent heat of fusion of ice. I know I'm using my latent heat of fusion because my ice is melting. That means it's going from a solid to a liquid. So it's the fusion of ice that is the latent heat that we want. And we're told that that is 3.3 by 10 to the power of 5 joules per kilogram. Okay, so now to find the energy required, we're just going to substitute that into my formula. My energy required is equal to 0 0.5 times 3.3 by 10 to the power of 5. So the energy required for my ice to change state is 0 0.5 times 3.3 by 10 to the power of 5, which gives me 
165,000 joules. Your values for these will always be quite big because one unit of joule is actually a very, very small amount of energy. Okay, let's try another question. Let's look at question three. In question three, we're asked, what is the maximum amount of ice? So this time we're looking for the amount of ice required that can be melted by one megajoule of heat energy. So our heat energy is equal to one megajoule and we want the maximum amount of ice that can be melted when the energy supplied is one megajoule. Again, we're dealing with a change in state. So we have a change in state. Your ice is melting. There's no change in temperature. So anytime we have a change in state, the equation that we use is Okay, so we have the energy required as one by 10 to the power of six joules. We're converting our substance from a liquid to a solid, or sorry, it's melting, so from a solid to a liquid. So if our substance is changing from a solid to a liquid, we need to find the latent heat of fusion of ice. So that's 3.3 by 10 to the power of five joules per kilogram. So to find our mass now, we substitute in the values that we know and solve for our unknown. So we have one by 10 to the power of six equals 3.3 by 10 to the power of five times the mass. And then dividing both sides by 3.3 to find our mass. Substituting that into our calculator gives us a mass of ice of 3.03 .03 kg. Okay, so the mass of ice that is melting is 3.03 .03 kg. Okay, let's look at another question. So in this question, we're going to look at number six. How much heat energy is required to bring 3 kg of ice at 0 degrees Celsius to 99 degrees Celsius? All right, this is where we need to use the steps that we've written above. When we're looking at these equations, we must look at how much heat is required to change state and how much heat energy is required for a change in temperature. If your substance is changing state, we need to use the equation LM to find the amount of energy required. And if your substance is changing temperature, you must use the equation MC delta T. So in question six, let's just draw a diagram. So I have ice. Okay, so I have three kg of ice and I'm adding heat. I want to see how much heat energy is needed for this ice to melt and for this ice to increase in temperature to 99 degrees. So the energy required is equal to the energy to change state. So we need to find how much energy is needed for this ice at zero degrees to change into water. And then we're going to continue to add energy to increase the temperature. So we need to see how much energy is required for there to be a change in temperature. Okay, so now that we've set up our equation, we're going to substitute in our formulas for changing of state and changes of energy. So E, the energy required, is equal to, if there's a change in state, we use our equation LM, and if there's a change in temperature, 
we must use the equation mc delta t. So in this question, we're told that our mass is equal to 3 kg. And we know that our ice is melting. Ice is going from a solid to a liquid. So your latent heat is your latent heat of fusion, which you are given above as 3.3 .3 by 10 to the power of 5. So our energy required is equal to 3.3 .3 by 10 to the power of 5 times 3 plus once your ice has melted it becomes ice water at zero degrees. We continue to add heat so that your ice water raises in temperature to 99 degrees. So to find the energy required for change in temperature we use mc delta t your mass is equal to 3 kg. Your specific heat capacity is given above, which is the specific heat capacity of water, 4,180. And your change in temperature is your final temperature minus your initial temperature. So it goes from 99 degrees and it started at zero degrees. Okay, so from here, we substitute our values into our calculator and find our total energy required. So 3.3 .3 by 10 to the power of 5 times 3 gives me 99,000 joules. Oh, sorry, 990,000 joules. And the energy required to change temperature is equal to 3 times 4180 times 99, which is 1241460. And adding these together gives me my energy of. 2,231,460. That's 2231460 joules. So in these questions, you have to be really careful. You have to think about where your energy is needed. So is there a change in temperature? Is there a change in state? Or is there both? Let's try another one. Okay, let's look at question eight. How much heat energy is needed to completely convert 60 grams of water at 15 degrees Celsius to steam at 100 degrees Celsius? Again, in these questions, we're gonna draw a diagram. So we want how much heat energy and it will help you try and figure out what's happening here. So how much heat energy is required to change 60 grams of water? So we have 60 grams of water, which is at 15 degrees Celsius. We need to add heat so that this water goes to 100 degrees Celsius and then changes state. How much energy is needed for all of this water to go from 15 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius and then to change state? Okay, so we're looking for the energy required. So your energy required is the amount of energy for your water to first change temperature. So we need the water to go from 15 degrees to 100 degrees. And when it's at 100 degrees, we want to see how much energy is needed for it then to change state. Okay. 
Okay, now that I've set up what I'm looking for, you need to substitute in your formulas for change in temperature and change in state. If there's a change in temperature, the energy required is equal to mc delta t. If there's a change in state, the energy required is equal to lm. All right, let's fill in as we go now. So our mass is the mass of our water. So we have 60 grams of water. So we need to change this into kilograms first by dividing by a thousand. So we have 0 0.06 kg of water. That means that MC delta T is 0 0.06 times the specific heat capacity of water, which you're given above as 4,180, times your change in temperature. Your change in temperature in this case, so your change in temperature is your final temperature minus your initial temperature, or whichever value is bigger from the smaller value, which is 100 minus 15. So your water started at 15 degrees and it's going to rise up to 100 degrees. So your change in temperature is 100 minus 15. Plus, our energy required for it to change state. So in this case, once our water is at 100 degrees, it is changing into a gas. So in this case, your substance is going from a liquid to a gas. That means we need our latent heat of vaporization, which we're given in our question. So if we just go up again, we can see that our latent heat of vaporization is given to us as 2.3 by 10 to the power of 6. So substituting that in gives me 2.3 by 10 to the power of 6 times your mass. So your mass is still the mass of that water at 100 degrees. So that's 0 0.06. Okay, now I've substituted all of my values. I'm just going to stick it into my calculator and solve it out. So that's 0 0.06 times 4180 times 100 minus 15. Plus your energy required to change state, that's 2.3 by 10 to the power of 6 times 0 0.06, which is 138, 138,000. And adding these together gives me my total energy required of 159, 1,318 joules. Please note that your change in temperature will always be a positive value. So it will always be the bigger value from the smaller value. So if it's heating up, it's going to be the final temperature from the initial. But if it's cooling down, it's going to be the other way around. Your initial temperature is going to be higher. So it'll be the initial temperature from the final. So just make sure that that value is always positive. Okay. Let's look at one more.